Hello again, you sick, twisted weather freaks, and welcome to another fun-filled action pack, the special edition of this week of weather, talking about Hurricane Isaiah. This is meteorologist DT from Central Virginia. Uh, you're a captain of chaos, you're a colonel of catastrophe, you're commander of, well, chaos, really, when you think about it. Now, of course, we're going to be talking about this system just exclusively, so a lot to talk about. Let's get right to it. Now, uh, here, just a picture of my smiling face here from Richmond, Virginia. There's my two emails. There's the... Um, um, the Twitter page you want to follow me there, and the uh, what, and the uh, Facebook page as well. Okay, uh, this is what the satellite picture looked like yesterday. We all saw that; it looked very, very weak. And uh, you know, a lot of people were beginning to kind of ride it off a little bit. It's not going to be a big deal. And the shear really did kick the hell out of it. I mean, it, it was in trouble. This is even a couple hours later. You can see this is, I think, uh, in the afternoon. Yeah. Uh, so it was pretty, that was early. That's actually early in the morning, I think. This one was a little later in the afternoon, but, you know, it was in bad shape. So no doubt about it. Now it's, of course, it's making a comeback here. This is this morning one. This is as of noon. You can see it's blowing up again very nicely. Most of the convection is on the eastern side of it. Uh, there's not much notice on the west side and over Florida going on right now. It's all in the central and to the eastern portions of it. And this here is the, uh, you know, regional satellite picture. You can take a look at it and see relationship to the coast of Florida, the Carolinas, Georgia, eastern Virginia, Maryland, Delaware, that sort of thing. So you can see exactly where it is. And that's a pretty good regional shot. Now, this is the latest surface map. This is a couple hours old from this morning, but it's must moved a little further up to the north-northwest here. Probably right now, uh, looking at the recon, I think it's probably close to this spot right here. Uh, so it looks like it's parallel along the Florida coast, staying off the coast again, just like Dorian did. Uh, so that's interesting. And then we can see, well, you know, if you look at the blow up here, of uh, the uh, monster, this is a good satellite picture here. You can see it's really blowing up. Uh, and it's in great, regaining some intensity here. It's getting a little bit organized now. You know, the recon is showing that there's a couple different centers here. The low-level center, the mid-level center are still not together, still not on top of each other, but it's trying to. And it's getting close to being a hurricane again. Uh, you look at the latest recon, we'll get to that in one second, but it looks like it's getting closer. The, sat the visible satellite picture also showing, um, uh, you know, again, intensification. But again, the center is, as you can see, is probably right about here, and there's not much going on here. Now, one of the reasons why that happens, when you have slow-moving hurricanes uh, along the Florida coast or the southeast coast, what happens is um, it pulls in uh, drier air, and that causes a problem. Uh, you can see it pulls in the dry air coming in this way here. This is you know, also the dry air from up in Georgia and the Carolinas, Alabama, and that gets in train. So what happens is the western side of the system often falls apart, and that happens when you have coastal hyperhurricanes, uh, when they move along the coast like that at not a very fast speed. All right, uh, this here is the latest recon. Oops, let me clear this out. We can see... Did this not take him? I guess it, yeah, here we go. And then uh, this little recon here, and we can see... Now, this is from... Um, a couple hours ago, about, well, actually an hour and a half ago, and you can see that the uh, strongest winds, you look at the blue lines here, getting up around 60 knots, a flight level wind, a little peak of 65 knots, and the pressure, you know, getting 995, uh, and if we look at the surface winds, the estimates on the uh, uh, SFMR, we can see, you know, a little bit right here, uh, you know, 65 knots, kind of, you know, close to hurricane, that's you know, if that holds, if they can find another reading like that, like I said, it's getting close to hurricane strength. Uh, no doubt about that. And we can see another recon here. And uh, we can see on this report, we're definitely getting, uh, let's take a look at, we can see one pressure here and then another pressure fall here. So definitely blowing 995 now. And we're getting some winds up around 65 knots. And look at the peak here. Uh, 65 knots here, another one here. So, you know, yeah, it's getting close to hurricane strength, it looks like to me, from the recon. Now, this is a, a plot of the recon, and we can see here, this is, again, this is from this morning, but what the reason why I want to show this one, again, you can see where the center is. Look at the winds. The best winds here are clearly on the eastern side of the system, no doubt about that. You can see the best winds clearly right here on the eastern side of the system, not where the eye, and that's all because of the displacement. There's nothing going on in the west. Look how calm the winds are on the west coast of Florida. But all the winds are out on the eastern side of it. Uh, so definitely it's a lopsided system.
And that's important to know where the, where, where the strongest winds are going to be. Here is another recon from a little later, and this was as of uh, 17Z, so that's around 1 o'clock this afternoon. And again, the center there, 996, very clearly seen right here, but the strongest winds way out here. Look at that. Now, it's, you're getting some of these purple winds here, 64 knots, of the hurricane force winds at flight level. But it's way to the east of the center. And again, not much going on. Look at these surface winds here on the west side. Not much going on at all. And this, I think, was another recon shot. And you can see the same sort of thing. In both areas, we can see uh, strong winds here and strong winds here. So, But nothing going on the east. On the west side, there's a little bit of wind. You know, you know, got 20, 40 knots. It's not nothing. But the, clearly, the stuff is really the on the eastern side of it. That's clearly what's going on here. Now, the, recon, the, the hurricane model plots are showing uh, some models getting it to Category 1, eh, barely, and then it drops down again as it gets to the coast and, and pulls in the, some drier air, moves up the coast. Um, and look at the uh, tropical storm force winds here. I enlarge this from the hurricane center. Uh, probability, tropical storm force winds, 40 knots or greater, okay? And uh, we can clearly see, get my marker out here, see the uh, orange area here. So that gets close to Richmond, but pretty much not. Then along the coast of Delmarva, includes all of Hampton Roads, eastern North Carolina. Uh, maybe to Raleigh, but definitely east of Raleigh, uh, Wilmington, Fayetteville, Elizabeth City, the Outer Banks of Sounds. And that's, you know, orange in here. That's a 50 to 70 percent chance of that. So pretty good chance of seeing that. And, uh, you know, uh, Richmond, probably in the 40, 50 percent chance of seeing winds over 40 miles an hour according to the Hurricane Center. And the start times here, and we'll go over this in a little more detail, but you can see it starts coming in 8 p.m. and then it continues overnight into m Tuesday morning. This is when the earliest arrival of the tropical storm force winds, not when the event's going to be over. That's when the winds are first going to arrive. So, uh, our, you know, uh, in southern portions of North Carolina, 8 p.m. Monday night, potentially, and then uh, into Virginia during the pre-dawn hours on uh, Monday night into early Tuesday morning, and then advancing up into the northeast. Okay, let's take a look at what's going on here first before we get to the hurricane model. So this is the big trough I was talking about. It's very massive this time of year. You can clearly see it. It's very strong, very pronounced. Look at this monster, huge ridge up in Canada. And this thing comes plunging down like this and then goes over here. So this is the tropical system here. And here is your Bermuda High. So it's caught between these two features. That's why it has to do this. So it's going to go around the western flank of the Bermuda High. And then the monster trough is also going to do it. So uh, that's, you know, this is... This is in a classic East Coast track. It can't go off. It can't go off the coast. Not in this pattern. It's not going to happen. The Bermuda High is too strong, but it can only go so far inland. So that's where we're stuck between those two places. And we can see that with more detail here. We zoom in here. We can see now. This is as of a, a Sunday night, early late Sunday night tonight, uh, 10, 11 o'clock. You can see the trough coming in. There's a system off the Florida coast, and there is the Bermuda High again. That's not a thing in my imagination. Very strong feature here. And, uh, you know, that, there's the, uh, the boundaries right along the boundary here. That's where the system is going to go. Whoop, just like that. So, um, and then we look at the next one. This is now, um, yeah, this is, uh, uh, this is uh, Tuesday morning at 8 a.m. And you can see the system is in central and eastern North Carolina, the upper levels. The surface is more to the east a little bit. Uh, but there it's, it's being squeezed between these two features, the monster trough over the Great Lakes of the Midwest and the Bermuda High. And uh, we can, and it just continues to do that. And this is now Tuesday night, 8 p.m., close to Philly, maybe Baltimore, Annapolis, uh, Wilmington, you know, South Jersey, uh, and then zipping on out to sea. And now this is why the hurricane models are doing that. I mean, they're, they're in very, very tight agreement, very little spread here. Confidence is very high. But uh, this is kind of, you know, hard to see. So what we're doing is I'm going to enlarge this here a little bit. So these are the hurricane models from the 12Z run. And you can see clearly a couple of different features here. First, uh, the landfall is going to be Myrtle Beach, according to this, Wilmington, North Carolina, that area. OK, uh, it's going to pass west of Hatteras. That's Hatteras here. It's going to pass west of Norfolk. There's Norfolk and Virginia Beach. OK, uh, pretty close to Richmond. We're just to the east of it. There's Raleigh right in here. And there's the Richmond. Let me get on my different marker out here. And uh, let me oops, let me call it. You can see a little better that way. So this here is, you know, there's going to be that's like uh, Raleigh in this area. And right here is Richmond in here. So, you know, there's Norfolk and there's Hatteras. 
Okay, there's Wilmington. So you can see it's passing right between them. Very close to Salisbury, Dover, right in this area along the coast of New Jersey. Looks like a bisects New Jersey. Now, you see the big yellow line here? Everything west of that line, you won't see winds over 30 miles an hour. The wind field will collapse completely. Happens all the time with coastal hurricanes, especially ones which are borderline category one tropical storm systems. Everything west of that line, it's a little windy, you get a lot of rain, but no winds over 30 miles an hour. All the winds are going to be east of that yellow line, okay? So take, this is just, I've seen these things too many times. I know they're going to have strong winds, you know, into uh, in the forecast in west central North Carolina, western Virginia. That's not going to happen. Trust me on this one. And this is the uh, AVN, the GFS Ensembles. Same sort of thing. Um, let me call it up here. Here you go. And you can see it again. Now, the GFS Ensembles are a little further to the west here. And they take it very close to Richmond, Virginia, and right over Raleigh. You can see that. Uh, we're, we're, we're la landfall Myrtle Beach passing west of Wilmington. Okay, close to Fayetteville, and then there's Norfolk, way to the west of Norfolk, Hatteras, and so on and so forth. Uh, Fayetteville right here, very close to Richmond, Virginia, and then over Salisbury, Maryland, and probably to the west, maybe through Vineland, New Jersey, to the west of Atlantic City. That's where the core is. Now, all the activity is going to be obviously on the eastern side of it, and nothing again, nothing here west of the yellow line. I'm telling you, it's just not going to happen. Um, so we'll see. You know, you're going to be like in Charlottesville. You'll be in Farmville. You're going to be in Greensboro. You're going to say, that's it? What's it? Where's the storm? Okay, it's going to happen. It all happens all the time. All right, let's take a look at the wind field. Now, the GFS, because of the, the eastward bias of it here, even though it's got the winds much further displaced to the east than the actual eye, so even though the GFS ensemble track has it going through here, it's got all the winds way on the eastern side of it. And you can see, you know, in Hampton Roads are 50, 60 mile an hour winds. These are these are miles per hour. Notice here, these are gusts, not sustained. Max gust, okay, not sustained. Keep that in mind. Eastern North Carolina, Elizabeth City, Outer Banks, uh, Wilmington, Moorhead City, New Bern, Fayetteville, uh, Greenville, Washington, all these areas. Uh, Virginia Eastern Shore looks pretty windy as well. Right along the coast here, New Jersey, and then up into East Long Island and Rhode Island, Lo Long Island, Connecticut. Now, everybody in the Northeast, in the Eastern New England, look at the GFS, and they're having their sex fantasies with the GFS and the Winfield. I think the GFS is way too far to the west, to the east here. I think that's just nonsense. And you can see that because if you look at the other data uh, to see if you have a confirmation bias, and sure enough, we can see here we go. This is the European. You can see the wind field is significantly further to the west than the uh, GFS here. There's GFS, European. GFS, European. Now, notice here that the wind field is actually the very strong winds, again, uh, you know, over Raleigh and then just to the east of Richmond and then up into Tappahannock. Uh, maybe towards Annapolis a little bit, you know, Cambridge, and Salisbury, Dover, Atlantic City, very strong winds there, uh, and then even into Philadelphia. Again, maximum wind gusts, miles per hour, not knots, not kilometers, miles per hour. These are max gusts. Not that much here. They'll get some, but the best winds are closer to the, in that area towards 95. So that's what the European is showing. And again, notice here in the Virginia Piedmont in North Carolina, look how fast the wind field collapses right here nothing west of that line uh, it's, so it's going to be that's going to be an interesting thing to watch for now here is the uh this is the the nam it's a very very good agreement with the european nam european nam european nam and you can see again <clears throat> um new york city a lot of wind up in new york city western long island heck yeah uh, on the open waters there uh, 50, 60 miles an hour, maybe some gusts. You know, if you look at these scale, that brown is 72 miles per hour gust. Potentially, uh, look at the Chesapeake Bay. Look at that winds up to 70, 70 miles an hour on the bay uh, in maximum gusts. I don't know if that's going to happen, but that's what miles for. Raleigh, get winds to 70, 73 miles an hour in Raleigh. I don't think we're going to see that, but because it's over land. Uh, these wind gusts on the ocean and on the coast, sure. Over land, I doubt it's going to be that strong in Raleigh. But it depends, you know, especially if I say it can make it back to hurricane strength, maybe Raleigh could see that. Fayetteville, uh, Myrtle Beach, Wilmington, sure, gusts to 65 or 70. And then in the Richmond area, again, notice uh, generally 30 to 50 mile an hour winds here, some higher gusts. Uh, up in the same thing up in the D.C., Fredericksburg, Tappahannock, uh, northern Delaware, uh, Salisbury, Georgetown. They look like they get a pretty good hit here, Wallops Island as well, on the NAM model. Okay, in terms of the rainfall, 
notice here now this is the gfs now even though the gfs has got the best winds to the east look where the rain is to the west very common with east coast hurricanes tracking right along the coast very common so look at the rains on the outer banks you get wind okay sure but where's the rain you know there you go uh, uh even hampton roads one inch of rain in hampton roads maybe uh, salisbury uh dover um excuse me salisbury georgetown wilds island coastal new jersey all the rain is along i-95 and points west maybe out to the blue ridge so you got three inches of rain in uh you know one to three inch two to three inch rains maybe some four inch rains dc uh fredericksburg uh western northern neck western middle peninsula uh richmond emporia raleigh um uh, you know down towards uh, fayetteville definitely and then up into philly annapolis baltimore philly western new jersey maybe allentown uh that's where the rain is on the gfs um if we go look at now <clears throat> this is the european same sort of thing actually pretty close gfs european pretty close the european is a little more out to the blue ridge but you can clearly see in the european with its high resolution this makes sense you see three to six inch rains here on the european very again nothing in eastern north carolina in terms of the rainfall or hampton roads or coastal delmarva and southern new jersey very similar to the gfs okay so that's what this is saying here now we don't know whether it's going to be one inch of rain let's say in norfolk or virginia beach or hatteras or a half inch of rain but you can clearly see what the data is showing us look at the trend look what the model is trying to tell us the rains are not going to be very significant in eastern north carolina southeast virginia or the delmarva the rains are going to be much more intense inland new york city allentown uh um, the aloha hudson valley washington dc philly baltimore richmond uh, Charlottesville, Lynchburg, Farmville, Emporia, Gre Greensboro, uh, Raleigh, uh, places like that, maybe towards Charlotte. Well, maybe not Charlotte, but uh, in southeast of Fayetteville, yes. Uh, so that's where the rains are on the European. And the GFS agrees with that. And here is the NAM. Same sort of thing. Look at the agreement here. This is pretty darn good with agreement. Ray, that is GFS, European, NAM. It's almost looking like the same models. Notice again, east of north carolina southeast virginia the lower delmarva southern new jersey not that much rain all the big rains very much like the european three to six inch rains in all these areas richmond gets slammed farmville uh charlottesville lynchburg not roanoke uh greensboro salem raleigh fayetteville um annapolis baltimore philly uh gettysburg lancaster Reading, allentown big big rains in all these areas so yeah, it's like a big nor'easter in a lot of ways. If you look at this enlargement now, this is the NAM, just to give you an idea where it's taking it. Now the problem is, you know, they got to change the L here. You can't really see the damn thing, but uh, this is where the low is right here. Now this is valid as of uh, early Tuesday morning. You can see the rains, the, the coastal front has already pushed in the south winds, driving the rains in, the humidity is all going up in here. And then they, that's where the system is going to be. Now we enlarge this again. Uh, this here is uh, valid um, 11 a.m. The low is very close to maybe Petersburg or Prince George or Chester, uh, moving north of Emporia, headed in a north-northeast direction. Again, look what's going on in, in, in East North Carolina, uh, Hampton Roads and the Delmarva. Very compact system. And then uh, this is now, uh, just an hour later, you can see it's practically over Richmond, Virginia, or maybe just to the east, maybe by the airport. And then headed up towards the northern neck and then this is where it is by uh tuesday afternoon that would be four o'clock it's over wilmington pretty much uh just you know close to baltimore but probably to the east of baltimore then up over uh, wilmington and I'm, then I'm using the nam here because not only does it agrees with the other models but essentially what we're looking at here is a very strong coastal nor'easter that's really what we're looking at here now the concern is of course is as it moves inland the potential for spin-up tornadoes as the vorticity in the system begins to decay that that's a very serious threat with this system over uh central and eastern virginia north carolina central and eastern maryland the marva new jersey and eastern pennsylvania all right if we look at the wind field here now this is again we'll look at the nam you can see for the wind field um and we're just breaking this down this is tuesday morning 7 a.m you can see the winds very strong in eastern north carolina this appears to be where the model has the eye i don't know if that's right or not but this is where it appears to be right in here you can see right there 
and this is your, there of course is Raleigh so you can see what his relationship to Raleigh um, and the highest winds definitely over Fayetteville no doubt about it, in that area and the winds have not yet crossed really the, the Virginia North Carolina border and that's as of like I said Tuesday morning at 7 a.m. now here is uh, uh, afternoon this is uh, 10 a.m. Uh, 10 a.m. And you can see the strong winds are now pushing up towards Hampton Roads into Richmond to Emporia. The eye, if this is correct, would be approximately very close to Emporia. You can see it. The really strong winds, 50 to 70 mile an hour winds here. Again, these are maximum gusts, not sustained. These are gusts. Okay, strong winds on the west side of it. But as soon as you go into the Virginia Piedmont, look at the winds just drop off dramatically here. And then, um, you know, getting up, there's Richmond area, not in the D.C. yet, not in Northern Neck, but the winds are building. No doubt about that. And then um, this here is a noon. And look where the eye is. According to the model, the models, the eye is over DT land in Chester, Virginia. How about that? How about that, boys and girls? How about that? We'll see if that happens. Uh, you know, close to Richmond. Let's just put it that way. And then the strongest winds, very strong winds. Now, what's happening here, you're getting these easterly winds, and they're being funneled into the bay. So the winds are actually picking up here in Hampton Roads. So along the coastal areas of the northern neck, the middle peninsula, uh, south side, Virginia Beach Peninsula area, these winds on the coast could be stronger than what some of the data is forecasting. You, the, the short range, high resolution data is definitely showing funneling of the east winds into the Chesapeake Bay, which is going to cause the winds to really burst at times up to hurricane force. So I am concerned about that. That's I, I'm wondering if that's going to be missed by some other forecasters if they're not looking at this data carefully. So, uh, you know, if that happens, don't say you weren't warned. All right, um, and then here, and now this is uh, Tuesday at uh, 4 p.m. Now the eye is very close to Annapolis. You can clearly see that. And the strongest winds slamming the Delmarva, Georgetown, Salisbury, uh, Wallops Island coming out of it, moving into southern New Jersey. Strong winds into D.C., Baltimore, Philly, Lancaster, uh, Av de Gras, all Annapolis, all that area. Okay, so summary. Here we go. Very much like a powerful nor'easter. OK, uh, in general, uh, the winds may be a little stronger on the coast than a powerful nor'easter, but generally. So if your location is by a river, by a bay, by a lake, by a swamp with a coast and you flood with a regular coastal nor'easter, then expect flooding here. That's what's going to happen here. OK, so expect that a uh, when uh, initial rain storms will spread from south to north Monday, 3 to 6 p.m. in North Carolina. That's when it begins. The first rains. The first rains, uh, 6 to 10 p.m. Monday night in Virginia from south to north, and then from 9 p.m. to 1 a.m. in Maryland and Delaware from south to north. The winds also will spread from south to north. In North Carolina, southern North Carolina, Tuesday morning from 2 a.m. to 10 a.m., that's the strongest winds. Southeast Virginia, that includes Richmond and Emporia, uh, Middle Peninsula, Northern Neck, Hampton Roads, um, the Lower Bay, uh, Tuesday, highest begins to really roar in here, Tuesday, 8 a.m., and right through 4 p.m., the main event there. And then in central and eastern Maryland on Tuesday from 12 p.m. to 8 p.m. Okay, don't forget, this is a full moon. Have you forgotten that? Some of you have. That means the tides are going to be higher than normal. Don't forget about that. Okay, so if you're wondering, should I, should I not, tides are running higher than normal. So that could be a deciding factor. Okay, so if you flood in a normal coastal storm, you're going to flood this time. And the flooding may be a little higher than normal uh, than you normally expect with nor'easter because of the strong east winds, especially in the bay, um, and because of the full moon. All right. Worst conditions will last about six to nine hours, maybe six to ten hours in any one location. All right. Uh, highest winds, heaviest rains, uh, they're not going to be in the same location as I showed the models. The uh, highest winds are going to be uh, on the coastal areas, central and eastern areas. The heaviest rains will be away from the coast inland okay and again the best winds are going to be in northeast portions of south carolina central and eastern north carolina pretty much from i-95 eastward the southeast half of virginia all the delmarva um, and then also portions of central maryland um, and then also central nor uh, eastern half of new jersey north uh, new york city and then uh you know long island western long island as well okay the heaviest rains will be inland, not on the coast. From, let's say, more or less I-95, you know, give or take 20 miles either way, out to about the Blue Ridge. That's going to be the heaviest rains in North Carolina, Virginia, and into Central Maryland. 
And finally, the low-level center of the eye, I mean, when it comes inland, it won't be a hurricane, but it will have a low-level center, looks like it's going to pass, you know, over Fayetteville, I would think, and then east of Raleigh, but west of Elizabeth City, okay, then in Richmond, uh, between Richmond and Norfolk, and then up around close to D.C., probably east of D.C. So, you know, if I had to pick a specific track, Emporia, Chester, uh, Tappahannock, Annapolis, that sort of thing. So there you go. Power loss, yes, you should anticipate power interruptions and power loss. I think you should anticipate that, um, you know, especially in the coastal areas. It's going to be, you know, hit, hit and miss here. Uh, but that's what we're looking at here. So, um, you know, it's not a huge event, not a monster event. The other thing is, this is, you know, uh, another East Coast event. And we're only here in early August. So I think for whatever's going on in the tropics, I think we should anticipate seeing additional East Coast hurricanes uh, threats, several of them, for the rest of August, September, and probably into early October. This is meteorologist DT from Weather Risk. Hopefully this uh, was a useful uh, forecast. Uh, I'll see you over on the Twitter page and on the Facebook page.